This is the Panasonic Lumix S5 II, the best hybrid mirrorless camera for under $2,000 if you can find one without any issues. Let's talk about it. Hey, how's it going? I'm Johnny, director of photography and filmmaker. Before we get into the video, I do wanna address the, basically what I just said at the start of the video, the allegations of if you can find one that works. This is currently my third model. My first model had green hot pixels and there have been other users that have been reporting hot pixels on their sensors as well at filming at 4,000 uh, ISO on the second native ISO. And my second model that you guys just saw in the introduction had a half shutter press issue where the half shutter would not autofocus anymore. So usually you can press the autofocus half press on the shutter right here to autofocus. But as you can see, I'm half pressing on the shutter and the autofocus is not working. And I specifically turned on autofocus beep noise so that you guys could hear this. Listen. This is not me half pressing the shutter. This is me actually pressing the AF on button that is on the camera. This started happening randomly during a pickleball tournament that I was shooting. So I'm not sure what the case is or if this is a quality control issue. To prove that the shutter button actually does work, I'm gonna press onto it. And yeah, the half press does not work. I tried everything. I tried taking out the battery. I tried resetting the settings. I tried upgrading the firmware, but I was already at the most recent upgraded firmware. So that did absolutely nothing. So now that all that's over, let's get into the review of the S5 II and why this is probably the best mirrorless hybrid cinema camera that you can get for under $2,000. I actually slipped up on the introduction and I actually didn't mention the word cinema because this camera has a ton of cinema features. It has external Blackmagic RAW, it has waveforms, it has histograms, it has literally everything you could need to just be a run and gun solo filmmaker. It has amazing autofocus due to the new phase detect autofocus that they recently added. So let's get into it. So I took the S5 II and one lens to Europe, that lens being this lens right here. This is the 24 to 70 Sigma. The 24 to 70 Sigma that I brought to Europe did everything that I needed to do. I filmed in low light, I filmed in bright conditions. I'll go ahead and throw up some sample footage up on the screen of low light footage for you guys to look at. Three, two, one, go. Close up, stop. So the 24 to 70 focal length was actually incredibly useful and really versatile as a run and gun filmmaker. As I visited France, Italy, Spain, I just was able to capture a ton of footage without needing to carry more than one lens. So my overall experience with the S5 II has been about two to three months and I usually don't ever review cameras unless I've been using them for more than a month and this is that review. First up, we're gonna talk about video features. The video features that the S5 II brings for an under 2000 price point is incredible. There's waveforms, there's histograms, there's open gate, there's external B-RAW, which I've yet to experience because the Blackmagic Video Assist is incredibly expensive and a little outside my price range. Blackmagic, if you're watching, I would really appreciate if you uh, send me a Blackmagic Video Assist. Thank you very much. So believe it or not, this entire video was actually filmed in the 6K 420 open gate to be able to repurpose for social media, such as TikTok, YouTube shorts, and Instagram reels. I'm able to crop into the frame without losing any resolution, and it's absolutely fantastic for social media. So we're gonna talk about V-Log and how flexible it is in post. The dynamic range of this is greater than S-Log3 by a large amount. I'll leave a review from a fellow YouTuber in the description if you guys are interested, but man, the dynamic range, and the highlight roll off as well as shadow recovery is gorgeous. The image quality coming out of this after you grade it looks very close to an organic image and reminds me a lot of the Blackmagic cameras and their color science. So for other cameras in the $25 to $2,000 price range, you could opt for a used XS20, XH2S, or a used A7 IV that I have here. But 
honestly, for the price to performance and the features that you get, I honestly think the S5 II just can't be beat for the price. Now, I'm pretty sure Panasonic run this sale pretty often, but you can actually get the S5 II, not the X, on Adorama for $1,800 just for the body. And if you bundle it with a lens, you can actually get the 50 millimeter prime for only 48 bucks, totaling to $1,800 for such an amazing kit. So do I recommend the S5 II to the average content creator? Yeah, of course, why wouldn't I? I would also recommend it to the average filmmaker as well because of the amazing features that it has. I'm gonna change locations before these ducks come to attack me. No joke, look. It would appear I've made a best friend. Hello. What's good? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, tell me more. Anyways. I figured during the walk I could test out the IBIS. I'm currently hand holding this at uh, 24 millimeters. I currently have it on a PGY Tech Mantis pod. This is honestly the best IBIS. This, this has to be the best IBIS that I've ever used in my life. So other than the really amazing IBIS, I'm also testing out the overheating. I live in Houston, Texas. It's currently 97 degrees outside and incredibly humid. I've been shooting for about four hours outside. Safe to say the fan in this is totally worth the extra money. So we're back inside and to wrap up my thoughts, would I recommend this camera currently in its current state? Yeah, absolutely. I'm even more excited for the S1H2 uh, that will be coming out after with Phasatec autofocus, more video centric and probably with 4K 120, maybe 4K 240, who knows? But yeah, that's my S5 II review. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and comment. Ask me any questions if in case I missed anything. I didn't go over autofocus and any of that business. It, it's really been overdone. Uh, there's, there's plenty of videos you can find online, but if you would like to see those autofocus videos, with the 24 to 70 or 50 S prime that I have from Lumix, the 1.8, let me know and I can see if I can get to it. Thanks for watching.